Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. This is a problem for exam P for August 3rd, 2017. If you want to find some more information about me, you can go to smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. If you would like to um, look purchase uh, the study manual I wrote for exam P, you can go to smarturl.it forward slash btdt-p. P is the name of the exam, probability, and BTDT stands for the principle I believe you should follow when you study for actuarial exams, and it means been there, done that. Because when you take the test, you should be so prepared that when you look at every problem, you should be able to say, been there, done that. You have done problems like that, you have done more difficult ones, and you can immediately solve the problem. You know what to do immediately. That is your objective, to get to that point. Okay, here is a story of the problem for today. Um, a policyholder has probability 0.7 of having no claims, 0.2 of having exactly one claim, and 0.1 of having exactly two claims. Notice that these probabilities add up to one, so that's all. There are no other possibilities. Claim amounts are uniformly distributed on the interval 0 to 60 and are independent. The insurer covers 100% of each claim. Calculate the probability that the total benefit paid to the policyholder is 48 or less. So let us write E0 for the event of this policyholder having zero claims, E1 for the event of this policyholder having one claim, and E2 for the event of this policyholder having two claims. Let us also write B for the event of the total benefit paid to the policyholder being 48 or less. Then the probability that the benefit is less than uh, 48 or less is the probability that it's so when E0 happens, plus the probability that it's so when E1 happens, plus the probability that it's so uh, when uh, E3 happens. It's basically the uh, sum of probabilities of three intersections, which we then write out as conditional probabilities times the probabilities of E0 and E1 and E3. Now when there is no claim, benefit paid is zero, which is definitely less than 48, so the probability that B, um, uh, that B happens uh, given E0 is 1. When there is one claim, the probability that benefit paid is less than 48 is, well, maybe it's uniform between 0 and 60, so the question is what fraction of the interval from 0 to 60 takes up the interval from 0 to 48, which is 48 minus 0 divided by 60 minus 0, or 0.8. When there are two claims, let us write x and y for the random amounts. Both x and y are uniformly distributed on 0 to 60 and are independent. Thus the random vector xy is uniformly distributed on the square 0, 60 times 0, 60 or 0, 60 squared. And the probability that the benefit amount in this case is less than 48 equals probability that x plus y is less than 48, which is the same as probability that y is less than minus x plus 48 or 48 minus x which is, graphically, um, the answer is what fraction of the area of the square 0, 060 times 0, 060 is taken up by the region where y is less than minus x plus 48? Well, the line where y is equal to minus x plus 48 is a straight line with a slope of negative 1 intersecting the y-axis at the point where y is equal to 48, intersecting the x-axis at the point where x is equal to 48, and we're looking for the area under that line, which is a triangle with vertices 0, 48, 0, 0, and 48, 0, and what is the area of that triangle? Well, it's a right triangle with two sides of 48, the, and then the hypotenuse of it is um, um, the, the uh, line from the point 0, 048 to the line 480. So it's really half a square, 0, 048 times 0, 048. So the area is 1 half times 48 times 48. And the area of the square 060 um, times 060 is 
60 times 60. Now 48 over 60 is 0.8 as we already calculated, so this is the same as 1 half times 0.8 times 0.8, or 1 half times 0.64, so it's 0.32. So finally the property of B is 1 when there are no claims times 0.7 plus 0.8 plus 0.2 times 0.2 plus 0.32 times 0.1. So it's 0.7 plus 0.16 plus 0.032, and the total of these is 0.892, which is answer D. Please remember this is copyrighted material, and also problems from Society of Actuaries belong to the Society of Actuaries. I'm showing you my solution, but the problem belongs to the Society of Actuaries and is reproduced with permission. Well, good luck in your studies, and good luck on the test.